For the first time in 233 year history, a black woman is sitting on the Supreme Court. Today was the investiture ceremony for Katanji Brown Jackson. She officially joined the Supreme Court this morning uh, with the ceremony with Chief Justice John G. Roberts administering the judicial oath. Both President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris attended this historic event. Justice Jackson will help bring some balance to an increasingly conservative court and lose credibility that has lost credibility with the American people on a daily basis and with the looming possibility of indictments of Donald Trump, Associate Justice Jackson could hear cases about executive power and congressional oversight. One of the things that we've been talking about uh, is uh, the appointment of federal benches. And uh, Brown, of course, uh, she is one of eight black female judges. President Joe Biden has nominated uh, that have been confirmed. He appointed 13 black women, the most by any sitting president. Judge Tiffany Cunningham became the first black judge ever to serve on the federal, uh, cir uh, f f f federal circuit. Judge Candace Jackson uh, Akiwumi became the only woman of color serving on the Seventh Circuit and just the second black woman to serve on the court ever. Judge Eunice Lee became the only black woman actively serving on the second court, the second black woman to serve on the court ever. Judge Holly Thomas became the first black woman to serve on the Ninth Circuit from California and is the second active black woman judge on that court with 29 active judges. There are a few pending nominees, including black women, who become the first to serve on the Third Second Circuit, Delaware Supreme Court Justice Tamika Montgomery Reeves, the Fifth Circuit, Judge Dana Douglas, and the Eleventh Circuit, Nancy Abudu. The thing here is that we, we, we also... Um, now, one of the things I was talking with folks, Matt, about on this issue is that part of the issue is, yes, it's great to see these, um, uh, these particular judges here, but a lot of these judges are replacing black judges. Uh, I was talking to someone uh, who on this issue, and they said that what really should be happening is uh, we should be seeing an expansion in the number of judges as opposed to replacing black judges. We want to see more on the federal bench. Yeah, I think that's important. And I think it's important, especially on the appellate level, to have judges because you're not only looking at what's happening in trial, you have people who are deciding what cases uh, should be remanded back to the district court and what cases should be decided in a certain way so that if they go up to the Supreme Court, you know, you have a, a solid base of decision. So I don't disagree with that principle. I think it should not just be replacing the black judges, but it should be expanding those judges. And it should really be about making sure it's not purely ornamental because the reality is, you know, of the Supreme Court justices, there have been 116 uh, since the inception of the Supreme Court, and only eight have not been white men. So, I mean, the dearth is just ridiculous. The number of, of judges that have been white overwhelmingly and male since the institution was founded uh, in general, the federal courts, is just overwhelming. So it's important to not only replace those judges and not give us just this, this feeling of, you know, we feel good because we have a person who looks like us in the in the position. There should be a true proof that there's an intention equity on these benches. And to that end, one thing I wanted to mention is as we look at issues like qualified immunity and voting issues and other issues that are going up to the Supreme Court, sometimes the lived experience of those judges is super important. Like that judge in Mississippi who wrote a 76 page opinion, basically saying this law is bunk. I have to follow it. But this is a law that we need to change. I can't remember uh, your honor's name in that instance. That's important because that's not the kind of thing we've seen from judges who have not had the lived experience of being black and in America. So it's important for the judiciary to have those faces so that they can, you know, impart their lived experience when they're making judicial decisions that affect our lives. All right, folks, back to our Roland Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. When we invest in ourselves, we're investing in what's next for all of us. Growing, creating, making moves that move us all forward. Together, we are Black Beyond Measure. Folks, Black Star Network is here. Hold no punches! A real uh, revolutionary right now. Black Power! Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. I thank you for being the voice of Black America, Rollins. I love y'all. All momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig?